One can even do an experiment at home by taking a large container like an aquarium and put a lot of different kinds of dirt in the aquarium, stir it up, and what you'll get is one layer, not multiple layers. That's right, just one layer. However, this is not what we see throughout the geological column. If you don't believe me, here's a clip of someone who did the experiment. Let's do it for him. To test the Hovind theory, add different flood detritus to a jar or a small tank. A few stones, some sand, red clay, weathered clay, humus rich garden soil, natural topsoil from the forest, and a bit of vegetation. Add water and stir. Let's leave it to settle for a bit. Here's the tank again a day later, and we can count the number of layers it's settled into. One. What you get in this single layer is just a textbook example of what's called graded bedding. Coarser grains and heavy gravels tend to be found at the bottom, and smaller and lighter material like silts and muds are generally found nearer the top. It may look as though there are two or three separate layers here, but on closer inspection you can see the different grain sizes and the blurring of the boundaries. What you don't get are what we see in rocks all around us, clearly defined sedimentary layers, each made of different material and in no particular order. The middle band in this photo is sandstone, sandwiched between two beds of siltstone. This photo shows a layer of red limestone topped by chalk. So if Hovind's flood experiment spectacularly fails to recreate these separate layers, what would do it? Well, let's add the same materials again, this time recreating the kind of conditions we see on Earth today. First, sprinkle some mud to replicate what we see laid down in swampy areas or in the estuaries of silt-rich rivers. Then the sort of sand that today is being deposited offshore near more arid environments. Next, we'll add a thin layer of topsoil to represent rapid erosion, then coarse sand and grit to replicate what we see today being deposited in some deltas. And finally, a layer of larger stones to represent a conglomerate. And presto, we've recreated the layering we see in the rocks all around us. The idiot who performed that experiment came to erroneous conclusions because he does not understand how layers and strata are laid down. You're going to find out today. Be patient and watch this. It's an eye-opener. Be patient? I have gone through so many videos of yours thus far without you ever producing evidence. So I don't think you should be talking about patience right about now. So as we can clearly observe from nature and from a simple backyard experiment that any child can do himself, the geological column is not the result of a planet-wide flood. It most certainly is. In fact, you're going to see scientific experimentation in this video, which verifies that the layers of this earth are not laid down the way you think they are, or the way the other bozo who performed that little home experiment thinks they are. Please, don't keep me in suspense. Let's see this evidence. And any claim from a young earth creationist that the geological column is a result of a planet-wide flood will be dismissed as a claim that they cannot back up and is easily disproven by what is observed. Boy, did you ever make a bozo of yourself, little trucking bozo. You're going to feel pretty small when you finish watching this video. Oh, for crying out loud, stop being so bloody arrogant and get to the evidence. If you really have any, just go straight to the evidence. Now let's watch some real science, conducted by real scientists, which verify that the, quote, geologic column, end quote, is the result of the Noachian flood. So your claim here is that what you're about to show shows that the geological column was created by the flood. All right, let's see this. Got your popcorn? French sedimentologist Guy Berthaud discovered two immensely important facts. The first was that sand, flowing continuously, whether in a vacuum, in the air, or in the water, sorts itself out into alternating deposits of large and small particles that look like layers, but are not layers. The second vital fact emerged during the program of experiments he was directing with the State University of Colorado. Looking through the transparent sides of a large tank or flume, he studied the particles of sediment in the moving water. He observed that when the speed of the current was reduced, only the large particles of sediment were deposited. When the current was increased, microstrata started to form. So the grading of particles in strata 
was not just the result of layers of sediment piling up on top of each other, as had always been thought. The Wait a second, he just discovered this? Why didn't he read any other research papers from other geologists, especially seeing what he discovered had already been well known to geologists for some time before he finally learned about it? The fact that he believes he discovered it first shows a lack of research. However, to the credit of this late blooming scientist, this process is actually real. Layers can, under controlled conditions, result in what appears to be layers. It can also happen in nature, although somewhat rare. Now, under particular conditions, this process can happen mostly on slopes or when uh, floodwaters flow into a calm lake. However, floods in general don't produce this kind of effect. Most of the time, however, what we see when it comes to floods is something more like what was in my previous video, which I'm posting a clip while we talk here. However, the claims made in this video that Nephilim Free presented have been shown not to represent what we see in the geological column, and I will include a link on this topic which go into detail with the experiment, and anyone who reads this will see why they have been debunked when it comes to a worldwide flood. Most people don't need to read the sites to understand that the layer we see today are not the result of what is proposed in this experiment, even if the experiment could hypothetically result in what we see today. Why? Because most people with even the smallest amount of understanding of geology know that such things as coal stems that are interleaved between marine sediment layers and dissertation cracks that happen only when mud is baked dry could not be explained by such a layering system. I mean, how does mud bake dry while it's underwater and being covered by another layer? How does such a process explain wind-blown sand dunes between layers that supposedly were created as a result of a worldwide flood which created such layers? The fact is that the experiment is not representative of what we see. This, however, is. See, science is not just about finding one thing. It's about taking everything, all the information, all the data, all the tests, all the evidence, and putting it together and showing what is the best explanation for all the data that we have. Now, creationists often say that we have the same evidence, but we interpret that evidence different. And this may be true in some cases when it comes to a single piece of evidence. However, unlike creationists who can only interpret one piece of evidence at a time, so to avoid contradiction with other evidence that shows that their interpretation is wrong, real scientists and those that uh, creationists mistakenly call evolutionists accept all the evidence that is being presented and make a conclusion from that evidence. If any of the other evidence that is ever presented shows that that interpretation is wrong, then a new interpretation of that evidence is made from that. This is why the reality denialists like Nephilim Free need to ignore evidence such as roots and burls that are interleaved between layers of sediment that supposedly were created during the flood. Anyways, Nephilim Free, this is still just a claim. Claiming that the Earth's layering had been laid down like that in the video is just a claim that it had been done like that, not evidence that it has. And again, seeing that what we see in the geological column does not represent the creationist version of the geological column, such as dinosaur footprints on coal stems, then such a claim is dismissed, not only due to the lack of evidence, but due to the claim being the opposite of what we observe.